Chapter 1, Unearthed Memories The wind howled through the decrepit trees as I stumbled upon the graveyard, its wrought iron gate creaking open as if welcoming me into its sinister embrace. I shivered, the chill of the night seeping into my bones, sending a shudder down my spine. My flashlight flickered, casting eerie shadows among the tombstones that seemed to stretch endlessly into the darkness. I had always been drawn to the macabre, fascinated by the stories of the forgotten souls that lay buried beneath the earth. And tonight, fueled by equal parts curiosity and recklessness, I had dared to venture into this haunted graveyard, despite the warnings of the townsfolk. As I made my way deeper into the graveyard, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, the sensation of unseen eyes boring into my very soul. Each step I took seemed to echo through the silence, reverberating off the ancient headstones like a grim reminder of my mortality. I stopped in front of a particularly weathered tombstone, its inscription barely legible beneath a thick layer of moss. With trembling fingers, I reached out to brush away the debris, revealing the name etched into the stone, Emily Hawthorne, beloved daughter. A chill swept over me, and I couldn't help but wonder what horrors lay beneath the cold earth. But before I could dwell on the thought any longer, a soft whisper filled the air, barely audible above the rustling of the trees. Who's there? I called out, my voice trembling with fear. But there was no reply, only the sound of my own heartbeat pounding in my ears. I took a step back, my pulse quickening as I scanned the darkness for any sign of movement. And that's when I saw her, a figure standing among the graves, her form bathed in an otherworldly glow. Emily? I whispered, hardly daring to believe my eyes. The figure didn't move, didn't speak, but I could feel her gaze upon me, heavy with sorrow and longing. Without a second thought, I followed her, my footsteps quickening as I chased after the elusive specter. Chapter 2, Haunting Memories The graveyard seemed to stretch on endlessly, the trees closing in around me like gnarled fingers grasping for purchase. But still, I pressed on, driven by an inexplicable force that urged me forward. With each step, the whispers grew louder, a cacophony of voices that filled the air with their mournful cries. I could feel their pain, their anguish, echoing through the darkness like a haunting melody. And then, suddenly, I stumbled upon it, a mausoleum hidden away in the depths of the graveyard, its stone walls weathered and worn with age. I approached cautiously, my heart pounding in my chest as I pushed open the heavy iron door. Inside, the air was thick with the scent of decay, the darkness broken only by the faint glow of moonlight filtering in through the cracks in the ceiling. And there, in the center of the room, lay a sarcophagus adorned with intricate carvings and symbols of a bygone era. I approached slowly, my footsteps echoing off the stone walls as I reached out to touch the cold surface of the sarcophagus. And that's when I saw her again, the ghostly figure of Emily Hawthorne, her eyes filled with an otherworldly sadness as she stared back at me. Who are you? I whispered, my voice barely audible above the din of the whispers that filled the room. But Emily said nothing, only reaching out a spectral hand as if beckoning me closer. And without hesitation, I obeyed, my fingers trembling as they brushed against hers. In that moment, I felt a surge of energy course through me, a flood of memories and emotions that weren't my own. I saw flashes of Emily's life, the joy of her childhood, the sorrow of her untimely death, and I knew then that I had stumbled upon something far more sinister than I could have ever imagined. Chapter 3, The Pack The memories washed over me like a tidal wave, threatening to drown me in their overwhelming intensity. I saw Emily Hawthorne as she had been in life, a young girl full of hopes and dreams, her laughter ringing out through the halls of her family's estate. But beneath the surface, there was darkness, a darkness that had consumed her from within, driving her to make a pact with forces beyond her comprehension. And now, trapped between the worlds of the living and the dead, she wandered the graveyard in search of redemption. I knew then that I had to help her, to free her from the chains that bound her to this cursed place. But as I reached out to touch her once more, a voice echoed through the darkness, a voice filled with malice and hatred. You dare to interfere? It hissed, sending a chill down my spine. I turned to face the source of the voice, my heart pounding in my chest as I beheld the figure standing before me, a shadowy figure cloaked in darkness, its eyes burning with an otherworldly fire. Who are you? I demanded, my voice trembling with fear. 
The figure chuckled, a sound that sent shivers down my spine. I am the guardian of this place, the keeper of its secrets, it replied, its voice echoing through the mausoleum like a death knell. And what do you want with Emily? I asked, my hands balling into fists at my sides. The figure smiled, a cold, cruel smile that sent a shiver down my spine. Emily made a pact with me, a pact that she must fulfill if she ever hopes to find peace, it said, its voice dripping with malice. And what pact is that? I demanded, my voice rising with anger. The figure's smile widened, its eyes gleaming with anticipation. A soul for a soul, it said, its voice echoing through the darkness. Emily must claim a soul for me, a soul, to take her place in the realm of the living. I stared at the figure in horror, my mind reeling with the implications of its words. And then, without another word, it vanished into the darkness, leaving me alone with Emily once more. Chapter 4, The Ritual I knew then what I had to do. I had to find a way to break Emily's pact with the shadowy figure that haunted her every step. But as I looked into her eyes, I could see the fear and uncertainty that lingered within, a reflection of my own doubts and insecurities. We can't let it win, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. We have to find a way to break the pact. Emily nodded, her eyes filled with determination. But how? She asked, her voice trembling with fear. I paused, my mind racing as I searched for a solution. And then, suddenly, it came to me, a ritual, a way to sever the ties that bound Emily to the shadowy figure that lurked in the darkness. We need to perform a ritual, I said, my voice filled with newfound resolve. A ritual to banish the entity that haunts you and free your soul from its grasp. Emily nodded, her eyes shining with hope. What do we need to do? She asked, her voice steady, despite the fear that lingered within. I took a deep breath, stealing myself for what lay ahead. We need to gather the ingredients for the ritual, a lock of hair from a living soul, the blood of a willing participant, and a relic from the spirit world. Emily nodded, her eyes shining with determination. Then let's not waste any time, she said, her voice filled with urgency. And so, we set out into the darkness, our footsteps echoing through the graveyard as we searched for the ingredients we needed to perform the ritual that would free Emily from her curse. Chapter 5, The Confrontation as we gathered the final ingredients for the ritual, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, the sensation of unseen eyes boring into my very soul. But still, I pressed on, driven by a determination that burned like a fire in my chest. And then, suddenly, we stumbled upon it, the shadowy figure that had haunted Emily's every step, its form towering over us, like a dark cloud on the horizon. You dare to defy me, it hissed, its voice echoing through the darkness, like a death knell. I stepped forward, my heart pounding in my chest as I faced the figure head-on. We will not let you take Emily's soul, I said, my voice filled with defiance. The figure chuckled, a sound that sent shivers down my spine. You think you can defeat me? It sneered, its eyes burning with hatred. But I refused to back down, my gaze steady as I met the figure's gaze. We have the ingredients for the ritual, I said, my voice ringing out through the darkness and we will use them to banish you from this place forever." The figure laughed, a cold, cruel laugh that sent a shiver down my spine. "'You think a simple ritual can banish me?' it said, its voice dripping with malice. "'I am beyond your feeble attempts to stop me.' But still, I pressed on, my hands trembling as I reached into my pocket and withdrew the final ingredient for the ritual, a relic from the spirit world, a talisman imbued with ancient power. And as I held the talisman aloft, a blinding light filled the darkness, illuminating the graveyard with its otherworldly glow. The figure screamed, a scream that echoed through the night like a banshee's wail, as it was consumed by the light, its form dissolving into nothingness. And then, as suddenly as it had begun, the light faded, leaving behind only silence and darkness. I turned to Emily, a smile spreading across my face as I beheld the look of relief and gratitude that shone in her eyes. We did it, I said, my voice filled with awe. We banished the entity that haunted you and freed your soul from its grasp. Emily nodded, her eyes shining with tears of joy. Thank you, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. Thank you for saving me. And as we stood there in the darkness, surrounded by the graves of the forgotten, I knew that we had faced our fears and emerged victorious, that we had conquered the darkness and brought light to the shadows that lurked within. For in the end, it was not the darkness that defined us, but the light that we carried within our hearts, 
the light that would guide us through even the darkest of nights and lead us safely home.